welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about how I would get a job at Google. So knowing what I know now, what would I do to increase my chance of getting that interview? I interviewed with Google once, but while I was here, I interviewed a bunch of candidates. So I'm, I'm here to share a bunch of insights about like what would I do to increase my chance of passing the interview. But first up, the most important thing, it's actually how do you get that interview? So I made many videos about how to increase your chance and I think the same applies here. Having relevant experience is the most important thing. So you gotta look at your resume and ask yourself, do I have enough technical skill to justify for a technical interview? If the answer is no, then you have to focus on how you can accumulate those experiences. And for me, previous internship experience is very important, but a lot of times it's hard to get those previous internships. So I would recommend working on personal projects. Look online to see like some of the hackathons because generally speaking, hackathons have like a theme. That theme helps you to focus and narrow down on a certain project that you could work on. And another aspect is take an online class. For example, a lot of online classes teach you how to build or show you how to build things from end to end. And that could be considered a personal project or relevant experiences as well. And I think the best way to get it could be bootcamp for a lot of people with no prior experiences or didn't even study computer science in college. A bootcamp literally is like an end-to-end, -end, show you exactly how you can expect when you are on the job. So I would say like bootcamp actually has a huge advantage in the fact that they show you how tools, certain process works more so than college, which focus on the knowledge. These relevant experiences and enough technical knowledge getting that first round of interview which is either to take off assignment or going straight to the phone round is actually very feasible so i think a lot of times just comes to like hey do i have enough experiences and sometimes like maybe don't shoot for google straight up try to get any tech jobs and by having that first software engineering job you already open your doors to you know recruiters reaching out to you so i would say that's very important and now let's say like, oh, great, like you got that phone interview, which to be honest is getting that interview is actually one of the hardest thing. Like many people overlook like, oh, like how do I pass it? But before you can pass it, you have to actually get it. So like, I think having enough resources to focus on your resume, like making sure your resume looks good, like your experience is set up for success. Then like, yeah, like getting that interview, like there you go. Like once you have that interview, you can focus on the interview aspect. So if I could start again, in summary, I would say like definitely put a lot of relevant experiences, teaching assistants, attending hackathons, working on personal projects, or start off joining another company and then thinking about how you can transfer to Google after like working there for a year or two years. I would say these all set you up for success and that's how I would do it. And now let, let's move into the interview. So before I talk about interview, I just want to know, I just want to mention a few things I have noticed. like. Over the years, like many people like the concept of like grinding the code and like, you know, grind and memorize as many questions as possible. And of course, like it helps. I wouldn't say it doesn't, but a lot of times like that could also trick you into doing the wrong thing. So this is one thing that I noticed a lot while I was interviewing people. A lot of times, like I would ask questions that's similar to something that you might expect, but turns out what you might expect isn't the right way of solving these questions. It's not that I'm trying to trick you, it's just the fact that, for example, this question might be very similar to some lead code question that you already encountered. And on lead code, this is how you solve it. Oh, like you have to use that programming here. Oh, I have to use some very advanced like concepts here. But at the end of the day, like you are very pigeonholed, like you are so focused on that idea, like you're not willing to let it go. You're not willing to take a step back and really look at the question and be like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I need to use a different approach. So this is my advice or warning. It's like when you are interviewing, you really want to look at the problem first and really think about the problem, not just immediately draw a conclusion. And a lot of times, like if you don't really know the concept really, really well, you purely rely on memorization and this is something that you can fall into. But uh, yeah, what, knowing that, let's uh, really dive into it. I would say the, the best thing that I would do is to start off with the green book or any other online resources, classes that I have taken before. 
So I made a video about how to use the green book already, so definitely check that video out. And I would say some of the key concepts are, do you know all the good, important algorithms? Do you, are you familiar with all the data structures? Some of the very important ones are like arrays or like hash tables, like do you know these really well? And algorithm, for example, do you know graph? Do you know breadth first search? Do you know depth first search? Like these concepts, like understanding them is different from just knowing how to implement them. Because all the questions won't be this straightforward or simple, like it's gonna be a combination of how to use these data structure along with these algorithms to really help you solve these questions. For me, I'm a strong believer of like understanding this knowledge at a very deep level. Like if you, for example, if you ask me a question, like I can immediately know like, oh, we need to use some sort of hash map or this question probably rely on some sort of graph. Like these are good concepts or knowledge that you should have. It shouldn't be like, oh, I've seen this question before. Like it's kind of like a graph problem. Like there's a difference between like knowing the type of problem versus recognizing the type of problems. So moving forward, now that you have these concepts down, I would still recommend you to practice the code because at the end of the day, like more exposure to like questions definitely increase your chance. I want you guys to succeed here. So like definitely practice as much code as possible, targeting those like medium or like hard questions. I actually have another video talking about this, but my idea is not to actually memorize it, but actually look at the question and think about how you would solve it. I would actually solve it in a very pseudo code fashion, like, oh, I probably have to use some sort of like hash map here. And then once I have the hash map, I probably want to do some iteration. Oh, this is a graph problem. I probably have to use breadth first search. Like I'm actually more focusing on uh, like going through a lot of questions as possible and see if you are somewhat close. Like, I think this is a very good first step. So you don't spend hours trying to come up with a solution. Like if you hit your head against a wall, like I would recommend you just like go straight to the solution. Look at a bunch of them and see how other people are solving it. Don't try to memorize how they are solving it. Once you understand like what they're doing, try to come up with your own way. Cause this way, like it's more natural to you. In the interview, you won't be like, oh, how did the other person like solve this problem again? Like I forgot, like, yeah, if you actually done it yourself, like try to write pseudo code, like in a flow that you understand, when these questions come, like you will be more natural to you. So yeah, another thing that th you definitely want to know is like, don't be discouraged. Like if you didn't pass, don't be like, oh, I'm never going to apply again. Please apply again, like after like a year, like in this year, like work anywhere else, like build more experience and then try to do these things again, like study like the concepts, because a lot of these comp sci computer science terms like takes times to really soak in and really become familiar with. So don't be discouraged if you can't get it the first round. Like, don't be discouraged. And the companies don't hold that against you. They actually want to see you improve and show that you are tenacious. You really want to work here. Just keep applying. And I believe that one day you will be able to get that job, whether if it's Google or anywhere else. So moving forward to the last part. The last part is system design. So once you, for example, out of college or worked a few jobs, system design question come up a lot. And this is when I said relevant experience come really into handy. If you just don't have prior experience working on other companies or so, like this could be really hard. But there are a lot of online tools that helps you to really learn these system design type of questions. And you are trying, here what you are trying to do is like how you can maximize like different infrastructures, like what type of API design you can do. And these type of questions will be a lot more different than what you have expect. A lot of times, like these type of decisions, you don't really get to make as an entry level, junior level, even senior level at some companies. So like you have to spend a lot of time on this. I think it's worth making another separate videos on system design. So I'm going to do that. But at the end of the day, like system design is something that you should definitely be aware of. And the green book has a section on it that I strongly recommend you to read up and be familiar with. And of course, there are other good online resources that I really enjoy that I can try to find and see if I can link it in this video. If not, I will definitely cover it in my next video. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you guys want me to go a little deeper or anything. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe.